Many of you who have enjoyed my videos debunking James Tour's arguments on abiogenesis have been asking for me to review his most recent debate with Origin of Life researcher Lee Cronin at Harvard. The reason I put debate in quotations there is because it really wasn't much of a debate, honestly. Uh, Lee Cronin didn't really make any serious attempt to debate the origin of life or to specifically address any of the points that James Tour likes to bring up. In fact, he kind of just used the platform to promote his most recent paper on assembly theory, which, you know, I don't really have major issues with assembly theory, but I do have issues with that paper. And in fact, it was like probably the most dunked on paper by scientists across all fields uh, this year. I mean, from biologists to chemists to geneticists to physicists, pretty much everybody was saying how poorly worded this paper was. I mean, when the first sentence of your paper is, Scientists have grappled with reconciling biological evolution with the immutable laws of the universe defined by physics. No, Lee. No, they haven't. Literally, nobody has issues reconciling those two things. Literally, the physicists and the biologists were locked in hands making fun of this paper and how absurdly stupid it was worded. But that's pretty much all Lee Cronin wanted to talk about at this debate. So it wasn't really a debate, and the format was very, very strange. We'll get to that. But, luckily, James Tour debunked James Tour at this debate. It was amazing to witness. In his own opening, he dropped this gem on us. I think that we will one day find out uh, uh, how life began. Did you catch that? So James just said right there that one day he does think that we will figure out how life originated. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Grayson, you're just misconstruing what he said. He d he's not talking about some kind of naturalistic, scientific, mechanistic explanation for the origin of life. You know, he could be talking about any number of things from supernatural origins, you know, somehow we figure out how God did it, whatever, in a non-naturalistic means. Well, the format of this debate was very strange because after both Lee and James gave their opening, then they broke for dinner and the people sitting at their dinner table would then ask both of them various questions. And I am so grateful to this gentleman right here for asking Dr. Tour a very important clarifying question about were you talking about a naturalistic explanation for abiogenesis? Just watch. Just to be clear, at yes. the beginning you said, at the very beginning of your talk, you said that you think we will figure it out. Yes. But it was a very brief statement. So just to be clear, so you do believe, like, in the end, there's a naturalistic explanation for yeah, the emergence I, of life? Yeah, I think that we're going to see, just, just like we, we I'm, I'm using the analogy of the genetic code, where we're going to go, oh, Lord, that's how you did it. So you see there, in very explicit terms, James Tour agreed that one day he thinks that we will have a naturalistic explanation for how life began. There were no ifs, ands, or buts. He said yes twice, and then he went on to a further explanation. I've cut a little bit out of it because I'm trying not to show too much of this video because apparently James Tour has been going around copyright striking people who are reviewing this debate because he really, really doesn't want it to get out there. But sorry, James, this is covered under the Fair Use Act, so cry about it harder. Anyways, in his answer to this question, James goes on to liken our current understanding of abiogenesis with our understanding of inheritance before the discovery of DNA, saying that once we discovered DNA, then we found out the naturalistic mechanism of inheritance on a biochemical level and we understand it much better now, saying that now we understand how God did it. Well, okay, James, but then what is the point of literally all of your content ever? When someday we figure this out, how life can come about, I think it makes it makes the Lord all the more magnanimous in my eyes. If you can say that that brings more glory to God, whatever, dude, that's your religion. But I want to talk about your 
YouTube channel and the content that you put out because James Tour knows that his content is mainly viewed by creationists, intelligent design proponents, a lot of them young earth creationists. Uh, they're all throughout his comment section and they're the ones that are always coming to me like, did you hear what James Tour said about abiogenesis? And certainly their impressions are almost universally that you have debunked abiogenesis and shown how it's impossible. Pretty much the vast majority of your audience thinks that you have shown that a naturalistic explanation for the origin of life is impossible. It's like if a physicist made a YouTube channel completely devoted to debunking all the current hypotheses of quantum gravity, and they were saying, you know, oh, there's no empirical evidence to support string theory or loop quantum gravity, and they're poking all these holes in all of the current hypotheses of quantum gravity. And then their audience is coming away with the impression that this physicist YouTuber has shown that quantum gravity is impossible. You would think that if the physicist really did think that there was an explanation for quantum gravity and it's just not any of the current hypotheses, you, you would think that they would clarify that and would maybe not continue to make content that's giving their audience a false impression of their own position, you know? And yet, that seems to be exactly what James Tour is doing. I mean, you heard it straight from his own mouth multiple times during this debate that he does in fact think that there is a completely naturalistic explanation for the origin of life. And yet, it doesn't seem like he has any problems with the fact that his audience seems to take the exact opposite stance after watching his videos. They all think that he has completely debunked the entire idea of a naturalistic explanation for life's origins. And he doesn't seem to have any issues with them taking away that impression. In fact, he knows that his work is very prevalent in the intelligent design community. He said, oh, well, you know, I can't help that. I can't help how people use my content. And yet he goes and copyright claims all of the people doing debate reviews of his content. He has huge issues with other people using his content unless they're intelligent design creationist proponents. Then all of a sudden it's totally hands off and he has, you know, what, what can he do about it? Hmm? He might say this very nuanced take in front of scientists that, oh, I know that one day we will have a naturalistic mechanism for a biogenesis. I'm not saying it's impossible. In fact, I think it really does exist. I just don't think it's any of the current hypotheses. So he says that on the one hand, but then completely devotes his entire YouTube channel toward giving thousands of people the false impression that abiogenesis is physically impossible. That, that seems to be the entire intent of his YouTube channel. And if it's not, if for some reason he's trying to, genuinely trying to push a more nuanced uh, position on abiogenesis and he's trying to promote origin of life research with this nuanced take that it, we need to find a, a new, better hypothesis, um, yeah, well then he's doing a horrible job. <laughs> I mean, literally none of his audience come away with that impression from any of his content. All the people interacting with his content are taking away a completely different message than the one that he seems to espouse here. So I don't know if James is just lying here when he says that he does in fact think that there's a naturalistic explanation, or he's lying in all of his content by omission, by not hammering that point home and giving his audience a false impression of what he genuinely thinks. Either way, with this debate, James Tour has completely debunked and defeated his own position by showing that his actions with his YouTube channel are in direct conflict with his statements here. And that at best, the entire purpose of his YouTube channel is pointless and at worst, it is maliciously giving his audience a false impression. And in fact, all that his YouTube channel is, is him arguing with a straw man. Because literally every textbook I've ever had, all throughout my biochem classes, 
any textbook I've ever had that ever mentioned abiogenesis, not a single one of them has said, here is our complete theory of abiogenesis, here's all the answers, here's every step for life's origin, no. Everyone has said, we don't have a complete theory of abiogenesis. All we have are competing hypotheses. Here are some of these hypotheses, and none of them were ever presented as facts. In fact, almost every textbook I've had has explicitly stated the fact that we do not have a full explanation for it. So, James's entire channel is arguing with a straw man of what the actual science in the origin of life is saying, purely so that he can impart a false impression onto his audience and push his own religious agenda so that he can leave his audience with the impression that he has somehow debunked abiogenesis, even though in reality he holds the position that there is actually a naturalistic explanation for abiogenesis and that we just haven't figured it out yet, which is exactly what the consensus in the field says.